Right, today's video is a little bit different, something that I've never done on the channel before. In some ways, I'm not that comfortable with doing it, but I've been asked many, many times before to explain a certain element of my own personal game I'm explaining to you what I do and how maybe it might help you. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. So, many years ago, I had a decent short game and then things went downhill. Things went, uh, yeah, rapidly downhill. And as you know, with your short game, it's very much built around confidence. And my confidence fell. I started uh, developing the yips. I was duffing tee shots, uh, chip shots as I would call them, stabbing into the ground, or I'd also blade them and thin them right through the back. And there is nothing worse than you've grafted from tee to green. You get all the way there and then you go and make a right messier scorecard because you can't execute a simple chip. And that's something which I'm going to hopefully help you with today. Let's take out, I'm going to use a 58 degree wedge and I've just done a video um, with, we're looking at these wedges, CBX wedges. And they are in fact game improvement wedges. And that's the first thing I started with, and that's getting me a wedge, and it was the CBX in this case, the initial uh, generation of these, which helped me on my long road to recovery. And the basis of it was, what helped me a great deal was the width of sole, the amount of bounce on the sole, and understanding that this kind of wedge setup was far more beneficial to me than what I had in the bag at the time, which I would call, let's call it a blade style wedge. So how did I utilize the bounce to change my short game? And how did I change uh, a method within my swing, or my short game swing at least anyway, that got me far more consistent? It's still the same method I use today. Yes, let's get one thing straight and why I'm not comfortable with doing this. I'm a seven handicap golfer. I am by no means a great golfer and I've no right really to be telling anybody how to chip the ball. But like I said, I did a Q&A the other day and the same question come out about my short game and ha this is it. Whether you, whether you take anything from this is up to you, but I'm going to explain. I explained to my daughter a few days ago, she's just learning to play the game and we use this technique. She was chipping a ball incredibly well within 10 minutes. So, here we go. It's not complicated at all. Essentially, my setup is ball, whichever club I've got, generally ball towards the back side of the stance. Weight would always be slightly forward and hand slightly forward at address. That's my setup. That in itself is not enough. I can still blade it and I can still chunk it from that situation. What I then do is my concentration is on the, my arms, and my wrists and essentially I try to move them all in unison as I would if I was putting. So if I had putter in hand and I was making that kind of swing I'm doing exactly the same but I extend my arms to straight, lock out the elbows, keep them fairly straight and taut, at the same time I don't want to throttle the grip either so it's a fairly, although those arms are locked in I'm fairly loose on the grip. All I then look to do is get a rocking motion in the shoulders And as you can see, I just like to brush the top of the turf. Honestly, that is it. We could end the video there and you can go away and try it because it's that simple. In recent months, I recognize I was starting to tire towards the end of a round, both physically and mentally. So I considered a few options and then I tried AG1. AG1 is a comprehensive and convenient nutrition supplement. It has a blend of over 70 vitamins, minerals and other ingredients, including gut-friendly bacteria and antioxidants. So by taking just one scoop of AG1 once a day with water and a bit of ice, it contains all the nutrients you need to support your mental performance, energy, heart health, and your immune system. Like I said, I personally like to throw in a few ice cubes, making sure it's nice and chilled. Oddly, it tastes nothing like it looks. The taste is uh, sort of pineapple fruit flavor. And best of all, if you don't like it, you can get your money back. Personally, I felt more energy both on and off the golf course, no signs of any illness, so the immune system seems to be good, and overall just a healthier version of myself from a simple daily ritual. So if you want to give it a try, go to drinkag1.com forward slash average golfer or scan the QR code to save 20% when you subscribe. 
You'll also receive a free one year supply of AG vitamin D3 and K2 and five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Once again, thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. Well, it takes many variables out of the equation. So if you start with bent arms, we all know whether you're doing that with a driver or an ironing hand, then you've got sort of variables that can impact on the where you return the club at impact. If you keep your arms straight, and we're only talking about a chip shot that we're gonna try and execute fairly shortly from in and around the green, the chances are we eradicate a load of problems or we minimize them anyway, because like I said, it's just straight arms. I'm brushing the turf, if there was a ball in the way right now, I should just pop it up and stick it on the green. That's why it's so simple. They also take a lot of wrist action out of the equation as well. The wrist come into it a little bit, and I'll show you a bit later sort of how I adopt this same principle in a longer shot, a wedge shot, a chip shot. I don't know what everybody terms these things, but essentially I'm now going to show you, I'm probably gonna mess this up now, how I would set up. So arms are locked out, wrists are straight, I've just off the ground, so I wouldn't play that shot. I'd wait until I've got a couple of swings in that I'm comfortable at. Brush the turf, brush the turf, and this is gonna go in and be a great start. Not quite, because the grab on these CBX wedges is far too good. But that essentially is all I do. And when you've got, depending on what different wedges and lofts of wedges will do different things, I'm talking about ball flight there in terms of higher or lower, but essentially I don't change anything. So that was a 56 wedge. If I went to a 50 wedge, I would, I would, the, the shot would be exactly the same. Set up at the back of the stance, arms locked out straight, wrist straight, but a loose grip. And I'm just pushing through as I would do with um, a putter in hand. Not enough, needed a bit more of a hoof, but you've seen that one just scooted along. It was more of a bump and run type shot. Hopefully you can hear the crispness of the strike. And with this wide sole that's on the CBX wedges, also is important because if you don't get it quite right, that element of bounce and width of sole is also great for turf interaction for eradicating some of those potential issues. So anywhere around this green, and if I had a bunker in front of me, it would still be the same swing. I'd use that 58, 56, and I'd just do exactly the same. But this type of thing where you've got nothing in front of you, ball at the back of the stance, arms locked out, bruise the turf. Give that one a little bit more. Still, these are grabbing so much. Now what you've got is, and I said at the beginning of the video, they're not, they're not perfect, they're not, they're not stone dead. We've still got to do some work with the putter. But essentially what I've not done, I've not just knocked it on just a couple of inches further and I've not gone and thin one into the bushes through the back. I've got an element of control. So like I said, it's not perfect, but if you are struggling and if you are interested, straight arms, lock the wrists out, put in style. I'm gonna go a bit further back and I'm gonna show you how we do exactly the same thing when I'm looking to play anything realistically up to a 50 to 100 yard wedge. I will play with exactly the same principles. I feel like in reality, I'm sort of setting myself up for a fall here. Uh, but anyway, we'll give it a go. Um, I haven't even got a yard. This is all gonna be based on sort of feel and see if we can execute. I'm sort of saying that's maybe a 50 yard wedge shot. And like I said, just a quick reminder, my stance might be a little bit wider, but I've always got the club in the back of my stance, ball in the back of my stance. The only thing that happens here is I still look to extend the arms. Now at some point, you're gonna, you know, the wrists are gonna break naturally, but I try to minimize how much those wrists break. And I try to keep those arms just as straight as possible to execute this shot. So same principle, just brush the turf. I don't think that's quite enough, but Again, guesstimate on the, uh, I'm going to change to a 50 as well and we'll try a slightly different shot. It's having faith as well in that process. So you've got to let the club head come through. Do not decelerate, do not accelerate. And all I've tried to do is keep that tempo the same. And the main thing that I told my daughter when we were doing this practice, it's this brushing of the turf through impact and controlling that club head through impact 
you've got a sort of master. So those short swings down the bottom, brushing the turf, to me anyway, like I said, are really important. I wish we recorded Hannah playing the other day because she sort of picked this up so quickly. And it was at that point where I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do that video. I'm gonna have a little bit of a, little bit of a go and see. And uh, like I said, people can, people can take from it what they will. Didn't like that one. Didn't like that one. Still need to brush a bit more turf. That's better. That's that lower flighted ball. By no means perfect. Like I said, I'm a seven handicap golfer. From here, I want to get on the green. I want to get within 10 foot. I want to give myself a chance at a birdie putt. And all I want to do is build confidence and make sure when I'm in this situation, I've grafted, I've got all the way here. What I don't want now is to mess things up. I want to get on the green, get me putter out. Maybe I'll hold a putt and maybe I'll two putt and maybe I'll get onto the next tee without making a complete hash brown of the round. Like I said, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with this kind of uh, video, but take from it, like I said, what you will. That's what I do. If there's any elements of benefit for you, then fantastic. If not, then, well, just switch off and watch someone else. Right, I'll see you all next week. I'm not happy with them, to be honest with you. I think if I'm honest with you, I'd play the 58 is, the, is probably the shot. I'm not really feeling this. A grab on these clubs is so good, the CBX wedges. Far different than what they're supposed to be. <laughs>